What's up everyone, it's Daz again. If you're like me, you probably have at some point found yourself watching and heartily agreeing with one of the hosts of the Hill TV's rising, Crystal Ball. However, as time's gone on, I began to see more and more instances that made me stop and kind of think, wait, what? But even as they became more and more frequent, none ever actually motivated me to do much more than maybe tweet in irritation. Until now. We are going to see in this video, among a slew of half-truths, dog whistles, and flat-out lies, is Crystal Ball setting up a straw man argument in which woke people have created a political system where skin color and LGBTQ status is the only thing that's judged and the content of a person's character is ignored. And lest you think I'm exaggerating, check this out. Get off this idea that identity politics are the only thing that matters. Leave your identity politics at the door and start evaluating people by the content of their character and their record and not by some BS woke signaling that no one believes anymore. She even manages to make an argument that sounds a lot like she's saying systemic racism doesn't exist, or at least is essentially comparable to the suffering of the white working class. And by the way, if you don't believe the suffering of the white working class is just as real as that of the black and brown working class because they have privilege, then you are just as heartless as those who would put precious immigrant babies in detention centers. And as if that wasn't enough, to top it all off, she mocks and reduces attempts to address racial inequality and prejudicial treatment to an extremely Ben Shapiro characterization. This isn't a suffering Olympics where we get to stand in judgment of who is most oppressed. <sighs> Now, I'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible. But that said, I have a lot to say about this absolute and total bullshit. Let's get it. All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well. Okay, hold on, <laughs> stop. I'm sorry, I know we just started, but I'm gonna excuse myself for some extreme pettiness that's about to happen here because this might actually be the smuggest look I've ever seen in my whole life. This is some S tier smug. Easy S tier. If there was a tier above S, I would put it in there in no time flat. I don't know. You tell me. Go in the comments. Can you think of another time you've seen a more smug look than this? <laughs> and it's not just this one moment either. It's throughout the entire segment. I mean, I'm almost impressed. So I just felt like I had to say something. But petty time over. Let's see what Crystal has to say. We've been reporting on election 2019 this week, and I didn't want you to miss out on a genuinely historic result which occurred in Kentucky. So for the first time in state history, Kentucky elected an African-American to the post of attorney general. Daniel Cameron, a former Mitch McConnell aide, became the first African-American elected in their own right to actually any statewide office in the Bluegrass State, a state which, by the way, is overwhelmingly conservative and 87 percent white. I'm sure you were well aware of Cameron's trailblazing election, though, given the overwhelming celebration of his achievement by civil rights leaders, Democratic politicians, elite media, and all of the folks who typically celebrate such identity-based achievements, right? This is a live shot of Crystal Ball furiously gathering her straw in preparation to erect her straw man argument so that she can later burn it down. The white women who were horrified when AOC endorsed white man Bernie Sanders, the pundits who told me you have to be sexist not to support a woman, and those who support Kamala because of her identity as a black woman, they must have been elated by Daniel Cameron's victory, right? After all, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So if the thing that matters is identity politics, surely Cameron's victory would be widely celebrated. Wait, what's that you say? Virtually no Democratic politician said a damn thing? Hmm, weird. Okay, I know I said that they start small and lead you to a false conclusion, but clearly I wasn't giving them enough credit. This is actually starting pretty big because this is a complete straw man argument right out of the gate. You know, I don't know about you, but I think when you know you have a valid criticism of something, you don't have to resort to using straw man arguments. That's why I'm gonna play their whole segment with nothing left out. So you can see that I'm not misrepresenting them, just giving you my opinion. But I don't know. Seems like that's not the way that Crystal and Cigar operate. Hmm, weird. Isn't it though? So I keep calling what she's doing a straw man. So I think I need to be explicitly clear about what I mean by that. There are a lot of shifty things happening in what Crystal is saying, but the most important one is that she's trying to shift the concept of representation in the context of what woke people are demanding from being about having someone in government office that they feel have their best interests in mind, which is what it's always meant traditionally, to some sort of annoying, whiny college tantrum about being able to see people who literally look like them in government 
just because it makes them feel good or something. Which is why I say it's a straw man for Crystal to call the lack of celebration for Daniel Cameron hypocritical. Representation in this case isn't strictly about skin color, it's about who will literally best represent your interests in government. But because of what Republicans represent these days, very few people from these marginalized identity groups actually feel better represented by Republicans being elected, whether they share the identity with them or not. In fact, as anyone who's serious about these issues understands, in many cases, people who share an identity with a group can be used to misrepresent that group. Most black Americans are suffering not due to racism, but the destruction of the family and the lack of moral character. So in a certain sense, for him to be elected by Republicans in an 87% white state, some might actually see that as worse than a white Republican being elected because of the misrepresentation factor, which leads to racist media takes exactly like this one. Pow. Oh! But the reality is, everyone wants representation from people they identify with, if not racially, then in any number of other political identities, including ideological identities. For example, socialist, liberal, or even Democrat versus Republican. It's simply because they believe they share the same interests. That's why socialists wants Bernie Sanders. They don't want Pete Buttigieg, even though they're both white men. Probably the most important thing to keep in mind on this topic is that political interest makes political identity, not the other way around. That is to say, when people want enough of the same things over a long enough period of time, they begin to form a political bond and trust and eventually a unique political identity. But that's why it only makes sense for people of the same political identity to have similar political interests. In the case of marginalized people, it's easy to get confused and forget that these people are only part of the same political identity group because of the circumstances around their non-chosen, non-political identity. That is to say, a person is born black or born gay but when there are laws in place that make it legal to enslave or to murder you, or even just when people want to attack and marginalize you just because you're black or just because you're gay, which essentially means that your personal identity has been turned into a political identity through no choice of your own and definitely against your best interests, then you start to form political groups with other people the same shared interest in protecting black people or protecting gay people, the shared interest of survival. So the irony of accusing these so-called woke groups of engaging in identity politics is that they're in fact victim to identity politics, not the instigators of it. And if you think about it that way, then you can understand how this narrative being pushed by Crystal is not just dishonest, but considering what goal it's serving, which is essentially just to peel off support from these marginalized groups, it's actually really disgusting. Okay, so that was a little long-winded, but the good news is, now that I've gotten that out of the way, I won't have to say a lot more until we get kind of a little bit further into the segment. All right, now, what were you saying? Virtually no Democratic politician said a damn thing? Hmm, weird. Perhaps that's because identity politics is a thin rule to be offered by the Democratic Party establishment, corporatists, and media elites in lieu of actually delivering anything of consequence. Or perhaps it's exactly what Crystal knows it is, and which I just explained. Black people want representation, Republicans ain't it. Doesn't matter what his skin color is. But please, go on. And the lack of even one mention of Daniel Cameron's election shows you that they are well aware just how shallow it really is. Bravo. Now look, I don't want to pretend that race and gender glass ceiling breaking is meaningless. It's not. I loved that the first president my kids knew was a black man. It does make a difference to see people of color and women in leadership roles. But if those people pursue the same racist, classist, elitist, crappy policies as their white brothers and sisters, well, it's not really change we can believe in, is it? Ah, uh, what do you know? The argument that she packed with straw that had been sitting in the sun for five days and was laced with fireworks went up in flames at the slightest hint of resistance. Hmm, weird. Who would have guessed it? If you're an immigrant getting deported, does it matter to you that the deporter in chief is the first African American president? If you're in jail for marijuana possession or because your kids were truant at school, does it make a difference that it's Kamala Harris who gleefully prosecuted you? Aren't you delighted that Kellyanne Conway was the first woman to run a successful presidential campaign? The truth is so obvious that it's actually embarrassing to state it. What you do, the policies you advocate for, and the people that you help 
matters. And of course, she's just summarizing her straw man here. Yes, those things do matter. We all know that. And with the possible exception of a few extreme outliers, no one's arguing otherwise. When people choose someone to represent them in government that they share an identity with, it's not because they're 100% certain, of course, that, that person's gonna do everything they hope they will. I mean, think about it this way. Should the left be held responsible for what Kristen Cinema has become? I mean, when she came in, from what I remember, she was embraced by parts of the left. Does that mean that we throw away and mock all people in the future who brand themselves as leftists? No, of course not. And it's the same way with these cherry-picked examples that Crystal's giving you. And again, it's important to keep in mind that this segment is not actually meant to get these crazy wokes to change their behavior. No, no. It's meant to get people just like you to abandon anyone, and more importantly, any cause, that their viewers might then perceive as too woke going forward. That's the point. And since woke is just code for black, brown, and LGBTQ political efforts, this is Crystal's way of getting you to stop supporting those efforts. It's as simple as that. And it matters a lot more than having equal diverse representation in the advocacy and implementation of racist anti-working class policies. The implication of course being that people have chosen woke over good policy. Well, let's see how she substantiates that because that's a pretty big claim. It was Democrats who put in place the racist 100 to one crack sentencing disparity. Thanks a lot, Joe Biden. I am in no way defending the crime bill, but if you go back and look at the tapes, which I have on my own channel, you'll see very clearly that this was essentially a bipartisan race to declare who was the most tough on crime. Joe Biden was working with people like Strom Thurmond from the Republican Party. And if you know anything about Strom Thurmond, then you understand that this was absolutely a bipartisan evil. And I sure as hell don't know how it relates to wokeness. Democrats who proudly destroyed welfare as we know it. Same thing. Democrats who let the banksters off the hook so they could pillage African American and Hispanic communities with their subprime mortgages of mass destruction. <sighs> Same thing. I could spend the next 10 hours in a filibuster of woke democratic hypocrisy on this issue. I'm sure she could. But again, what has any of that got to do with wokeness? If you're a millennial drowning in student debt, do you care that President Platitude Pete the Millennial is the one who lets you keep drowning in your student debt? Hold on. <laughs> what has Pete Buttigieg got to do with this? He's gay? Is that why it's woke? If you're one of the parents of the 70,000 people per year that dive in overdose, do you care about the race, gender, or sexual orientation of the political coward? <laughs> I guess it really was that he's gay. Weird. Who continues our racist and inhumane war on drugs? Woke people need to wake up. Jesus if the Democratic Christ. Party wants to win and wants to be about something, then do something for the multiracial working class instead of just changing the race of the so-called leader that runs palliative care for the working people in the giant hospice that both rural and urban America have become. I, I don't know what to say. I want to tell her to go back to Reddit or something because that was just cringe. And by the way, if you don't believe the suffering of the white working class is just as real as that of the black and brown working class because they have privilege. Oh, there it is. I want to remind everyone listening that the concept of racism is about racial privilege and disadvantage. By denying the concept of racial privilege, you're also denying the concept of racial disadvantage. In other words, this is Crystal Ball putting scare quotes around the concept of racism in America. People have watched their jobs shipped overseas and their towns flooded with drugs. Definitely not an appeal to xenophobia. And their young people sent off to die in war all by a bipartisan consensus. Then you are just as heartless as those who would put precious immigrant babies in detention centers. Oh, come on! This isn't a suffering Olympics where we get to stand in judgment of who is most oppressed. Wait, 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 whoa! What the f I have contained my rage for as long as possible, but I shall unleash my fury upon you like the crashing of a thousand waves! This is a completely bullshit right-wing narrative that flies directly in the face of socialist and leftist values. Of course we as a society should identify places where people are having it the hardest, and if people are having it the hardest along racial lines, then we should address them there. The idea that we shouldn't try to figure out who's oppressed in this country is disgusting and borderline fascistic. It absolutely 
absolutely is the job of government to identify and remedy where its citizens are having trouble. Not to mention that the whole point of class awareness is understanding where people in the working class are being held down by an oppressive system. I mean, fuck it. If you don't care about who's most oppressed by capitalism, then why even care about Medicare for all, or minimum wage, or labor laws, or voting rights, or even civil rights at all? The whole point of those measures are to address who is the most oppressed, and you can mock it all you want, but it's sociopathic, and it makes you the enemy. If Democrats want to be the party of working people, then they can't pick and choose which people. And if they want to continue being the party of the professional managerial class, throwing a bone of identity politics to the black and brown working class to keep them in the tent. Whoa. Simply because at least we're not out and out racist like the other team. Well, that is not a party I want to be part of. I'm going to give myself a little bit of credit and say that I think I've made my feelings on that last segment pretty clear. But this next bit is really obnoxious in an entirely different way, because basically what she's about to do is try to hitch Bernie Sanders' horse to her wagon while she steers it right off an anti-woke cliff. Let's watch. I was listening yesterday to Bernie Sanders' interview with Mehdi Hassan on his podcast, Deconstructed. Mehdi asked Sanders if he would commit to a vice president who was not another white guy. Take a listen. All I'm saying is you wouldn't rule out an all-white or an all-male ticket. You're look, not saying look, there has look, to be any look, conditions. Look, 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 we have months to go. We will take a look at the best potential candidates who are out there. We're not ruling out okay. anything right that's now. What I was, that's what I was just checking. You're strongest not anything. and best. Strongest. <laughs> I love Bernie. But this is what yes. I will say, which is most important. Trust me, that my vice presidential candidate will be a strong progressive. My vice presidential candidate will be a strong progressive, period. It actually takes courage to say that, to say that the ideology matters first and foremost. And if it's a woman or a person of color, so much the better. Yeah, he didn't say that. Look, I don't want to have to put words in Bernie's mouth, but unfortunately, that's the position that Crystal's put me in here. Okay, what Bernie Sanders was doing here is exactly what he should have done, and it's basically to minimize the amount of damage that you can do to yourself by answering that question in any definitive way. In other words, he was dodging. That's it. He wasn't trying to make a stand against woke culture. You can tell he just wished Mehdi Hassan hadn't asked him that question. You're not uh, saying look, there has look, to be any conditions. Look, look, look. But my point is, Crystal is again being dishonest here and trying to steal clout directly from Bernie Sanders' mouth when he didn't give it to her. So Democrats, you have a choice. Celebrate Daniel Cameron. Celebrate it when he prosecutes women for trying to get an abortion. Celebrate rollbacks of worker protections and more mass incarceration because at least he's the right color. Or get off this idea that identity politics are the only thing that matters because by the complete silence on Cameron's election, you have shown that obviously it's not. As a reminder, this is not a message to the woke people, but rather a signal to viewers of Rising to shut the door on these so-called woke movements. Leave your identity politics at the door and start evaluating people by the content of their character and their record and not by some BS woke signaling that no one believes anymore, including, I might add, the demographic groups you're pandering to. All right, she's just flailing now. This doesn't even make any sense. If the people that they're pandering with this stuff to don't like it, then how is it pandering, right? Think about it. Otherwise, prepare for another four years of this. Look how much... African-American communities have suffered under democratic control. To those I say the following, what do you have to lose? It was pretty stark. I actually went and Googled. Bullshit. I actually went and Googled, like somebody must have said something about the fact that he was the first African-American elected statewide ever. Nothing. Look, I don't want to keep taking up your time with all this, but suffice to say, that is a big old lie. Yeah, they won't say anything. Nothing. It's funny because I remember Kellyanne, she, that was her favorite line right after. She was like, I'm the first woman to successfully run a presidential campaign. And it's funny because a lot of this is a trolling aspect, which is that yeah. if you know that it would have been the Hillary Clinton campaign, that it would have been, you know, it, the, the, um, it would have been nauseating. The amount of, the amount of like, oh my gosh, like we did it and all this. <laughs> this guy absolutely hates women. Oh, look at our historic achievement. It's nauseating. 
Jesus Christ. And yet, if anything similar is accomplished on the Republican side, I mean, it, it, the, the amount of celebration of it would be 120th, 125th of the similarity. And that's because there's not a consistency. You know, it's actually kind of funny that Cigar mentions Kellyanne here, because guess who made the exact same argument that these two goofballs are? First, state, independently statewide elected African American in Kentucky's history. I'm sure you'll all be writing about the history that was made yesterday in Kentucky. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> Got he. And one more time for the fiscal conservatives in the back row. The inconsistency is only who they believe will be a good representative versus who they don't believe will be a good representative. Just like with anyone else. And what you're getting at is that, that there shouldn't be a consistency because this whole standard is ridiculous. It should be all about class politics. Is that making it and focusing it solely upon this like racial, racial and gender identity for how we can talk across different people. It's just not, I mean, and that's just not how you create a cohesive body politic. And here we've come full circle. They wanna act like this is the logical conclusion of everything they've just told you. But as I've just explained, they're not just wrong. They're lying to you, because as much as Sagar and Crystal want to imply that racial identity is an invalid means by which to group yourself politically, given the history of this country and what black people and other marginalized groups have gone through since day one and still go through, it absolutely is not. And as I said before, it is by no means the only measure that people use to judge what and who they're going to support and acting like that was ever the claim is a lie. You can't, we right. can't be a functioning democracy that way. Well, and it's completely odd for people who engage in this kind of politics. It's completely obvious when you're talking about a Sarah Palin, yeah. when you're talking about a Kelly and Cuss, yes. when you're talking about a Daniel Cameron, you go, well, right. of course, we won't support them no matter their yeah. gender or race because the policies are not what we support and we think they're bad for people. Yeah. In other words, they don't best represent them. So yes, that's correct. That's exactly what we've been saying all along. You just made a straw man out of this whole woke thing all on your own. And when you're deliberately tying racial identity and racial justice movements to so-called wokeness, and then you're cynically condemning wokeness, you're essentially being anti-black, anti-progress, anti-social justice, etc. And it's not something that I would be proud of. And what is it you said earlier about being in a party with people who take issue with that? Well, that is not a party I want to be part of. Well, I have one last thing to say to you. Get out, man! You will not be missed.